180 miles an hour. Very shortly you'll see that they'll reverse that direction away from the relative group on the instructions from the team coach. And uh, that is uh, Sergeant Whitcomb. He's the stack leader. He'll be the man right at the bottom. You can see they've all separated now. Very shortly there goes the parachutes all being pulled. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm making that we got nine today. Um, Mike, let me just add here, if you're using binoculars, do be careful not to look into the sun. It's very close to where they are. Now, the parachutes they're using at the moment are actually um, called Fury parachutes. You can see they're oblong. They're virtually a flexible wing. Attached to the back of the Fury parachutes are, are drawstrings that are held in the, uh, coming down, held actually by the parachutes by pulling down either on the left or the right so they twist that uh, parachute or call it a flying wing so they can manoeuvre and you can see the manoeuvring is going on at the moment the, uh, the stack is virtually formed up at the moment a couple of guys just slotting in to make the stack perfect trekking slowly into wind towards the DZ now you can see the spot the man at the base as I say is the uh, uh, team coach Sergeant Whitcomb uh, right at the top is uh, Sergeant Khan uh, I only mentioned him because he's actually a very small guy, so small in fact that he's got to car wear a special vest with about a stone and a half of lead in it because he's so light that without that extra weight it would be difficult to manoeuvre the parachute. Also at the top of that stack, the actual team leader, that's Flight Lieutenant Floyd. So as the team are now starting to uh, manoeuvre towards the DZ, you'll see them uh, turning those parachutes and those of you who are fairly close you'll even hear them talking to each other and I think talking is probably a polite word because the guy who's above is obviously shouting down to his oppo below uh, to make sure that uh, the two parachutes don't get entwined and we're getting a second spiral now and as Sean said now certainly those of you down to the left of the display arm will be looking up towards the sun those of you up to the right of course can use your binoculars and you'll be able to see the guys actually pulling down to the left and the right on those draw cords which uh, allows the parachutes to negotiate uh, a very accurate flight path coming in towards the DZ so they'll finish up heading into wind and as they approach the two crosses so they'll pull down very smartly on those draw cords that will reduce the forward speed it'll reduce the downward momentum and if you get the timing absolutely perfectly you literally just step to make these <laughs> mistakes of course so you see them now separating to the left and right going for those uh, two crosses on the ground first two men safely down and as soon as the last man is safely on the ground so uh, air traffic control will clear in the um, uh, Hercules from RF Lynham it will carry out uh, uh, a fly pass to complete the display. And now, uh, safely on the ground, if you look out to your right, uh, the little dot.
birthday boys already on the runway to your right. Yeah, so Older, some Stop pulling there.
as you can say, Mario is coming. And our it's solo pilot is during it's getting too hard for these older people. Minus four can't say up to rain. plus as seven you can say, He drops off. <laughs> he pays twenty quid for a ticket and he drops off. Can you believe that? <laughs> I know, can I? <laughs> Just can't take the pace. Well, the uh, Lancaster and the Spitfire of the Battle of Britain Memorial Fight are taxiing down the runway. They're going to take off from left to right. That's... That appeared uh, in the new aircraft park at the RAF pageant in 1930, the first public demonstration. And the tutor it was that replaced the old Avro 504 trainers from the First World War.
displayed during the summer and they have no operational duties to perform. Although the Red Arrows do have a secondary air defence role. The rest of the teams you're seeing are of course the... The aircraft actually come from the Italian uh, Flight Test Centre at uh, Pratica di Mara. We'll be seeing some more of their aircraft later. Flown uh, by Captain, or sorry, Lieutenant Colonel Marco Fella. He's got over 2,000 hours. Of course, is the new transport aircraft that's coming, a helicopter that's coming in for the Air Force and also seeking for the Royal Navy. This aircraft and uh, make sure that all is well. We do have no sign uh, at the moment of uh, anything untoward externally on the aircraft. Because that does mean that there'll be a bit of a delay to the display program while they decide what they're going to do with the aircraft. I uh, huntings. Basic idea is you give the potential pilots of all three services a, a very rigorous course using this aircraft in basic flying training, instrument flying training, low flying, navigation and what uh, an elementary pilot uh, under training would go through is element dis actually demonstrating the capabilities of the Firefly, that downward flick. It's a side-by-side -side trainer so all the rest of the Air Force trainers are in fact tandem. Avalanche, again the sort of cross controls at the top of the loop, sometimes called a Porteous loop. In the vertical, oh no, just a gentle roll on the way up. And pushing the aircraft over the top in a bunt. Salmon leap. From the tugs. Now these are two K-21 gliders and they're flying in beautiful formation. Now just think about that. How do you keep in formation when you don't have a throttle to push forward to keep up? This is great skill. Squadron leader Chris Heems, flying instructor on the Tucano at Aria Blinton on Ouse. He's a former Phantom and Tornado pilot and he's a regular gliding instructor. Jamie Allen is number two, the man who has to do the really hard work in trying to keep the formation tight. He's been gliding since 72. He's a former service pilot, flew the Harrier, the Strike Master, and the Hunter. And he's been a commercial pilot for 10 years. Look at that beautiful split with the smoke still trailing from one wingtip each and forming a heart in the sky. That's squadron leader Chris Heems calling the instructions to Jamie Allen. It's the only way that he can actually catch up is to sort of cut corners and maybe uh, go a little lower. Increase the speed of that's a 
about this time, if you were in an aeroplane with an engine, that you'd be thinking, well, I've got maybe uh, enough height probably to sort of come into land from here, but they can still do aerobatics from that height. Quite extraordinary, really. Look at that, a line abreast loop from that kind of height. ladies and gentlemen, of the Royal Air Force Gliding and Soaring Association. But there's a point to centre, and lead at number two gazelles will go up to join him in an 800-foot hover. Keep your eyes on the links, the large aircraft in the centre, for about the next 30 seconds. Going to do something rather special for you. missiles or nuclear bombs on rotary dispensers. There are actually three separate weapons bays. But really, that is something out of Star Wars, isn't it? That wingspan is about 172 feet. It's only 15 feet less than a Mi-52, so it's a big airplane. But strangely, the length is only six foot longer than this tiny F-15. We were talking about how fly-by-wire helps to make unstable aircraft fly. Well, I think it's true to say that that aircraft would not fly at all without enormous computing power. It requires great quadruply redundant fly-by-wire systems to make it stable. But the net final result is an airplane that handles extremely well. Joining us. 
Sanford Pleasure. bringing Joanna up. I think she's very good. I, you, she won't believe this when you tell her. No, she won't. <laughs> <laughs> she certainly won't remember it. <laughs> she won't. Anyway, thanks a lot. Thank you. So, stealth rolling down to the end. That's cool. who provided vehicle which switched to tow our trailer. Go to the right now, just to show you that. As the Lynx moves off, the Zelf now takes centre seat. Synchronised bun. Separation of one road diameter. into 90 degrees of bank. Knife edge pass. Leader looping. Sorry, solo looping. And there is the solo coming back. Fin. The aircraft tumbling end over end as it rockets down from that hammerhead stall turn at the top. And pulling up again, he hasn't had enough yet. He's going to do another lomcher back. He loves these things. We do too, don't we? Perfect photography weather, little puffy cloud in the background. Now a rolling circle as he comes out of this. He'll just start the aeroplane rolling and turn it all the way. And uh, I think a large ole is indicated. A lovely show. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. And uh, see you next year, maybe. maybe. Okay, good. a short takeoff. This is the C-130J-30 and with me is Bob Price.
real sign as the noise from the engine disappeared as we see the tail slide. When the uh, when Czechoslovakia split, the Slovak Air Force got 10 of the MiG-29s. They then purchased a further six, giving them 14 single seats and two two seat trainers. Saw, uh, 
There's winglets on the uh, sides are about nine feet tall. Those are the little winglets on, on the end of the wing. Nine feet tall. Yes, sir. Give you an idea of the scale. Wingspan's about uh, half a football field. But one of our football fields? Yes, sir. Soccer pitch. Soccer field. Soccer pitch. Okay. Now, what sort of weights can this carry? I mean, it's, it's a very big airplane. It can carry up to 170,000 pounds. Typically, on average missions, we're averaging about 90,000 pounds of cargo. It can uh, airlift all our outside cargo, too, including the uh, M1 Abrams tank. It's the airlifter of choice. Reversers come out, the airplane will come to the stop, and then he'll reverse the aircraft. Well, in fact, these aircraft have been active um, in the Kosovo situation, and we can see some of that uh, on the screens while the aircraft is coming in on its approach. Yeah. This is real footage of the aircraft operating in the Kosovo situation. Yes, sir, I had almost uh, 30 missions into uh, Albania and Skopje for these. Uh, Are you in these pictures? <laughs> no, perhaps not. So here he is coming in on a fairly steep final approach. All that flap dangling slaps on the leading edge of the wing. Huge high lift devices. That great brake will bring the air, airplane to a stop. The thrust of this will come out and we're going to show one of the aircraft is the ability to back itself up on its own power. Thrust reverse is coming out. Hotline, I believe. But anyway, well done, Gary and the Barry and the Garrier party. Don't nudge me. It's the B1 sneaking in quite quietly.
30th anniversary.